Hey Adam, I'm Scott. Nice to meet you. Um, I don't have time to really do a well thought out video, but uh, while I'm in the shop, I thought I'd shoot this for you, give you a quick explanation of what I'm talking about. And uh, like I said, I think you've given me the seed of a video I need to shoot. So here goes. All right. So first off, uh, this is the, the head of the, uh, of the fence. And over here is the set screw I was talking about. This is the one I said, don't use this for adjusting. This is for uh, misadjusting or uh, basically this is very rarely used. And so I would suggest taking that set screw out and so that you know where to find it when you need it, just go ahead and store it right here in this hole or this hole on the top of your miter gauge. Now on the back side of that, is the glide that allows your uh, miter gauge to slide smoothly across the table. So it's not going to be in the way. And you can also use it to lock a stop rod in here if you have one of those. Okay, uh, let's, let's talk about getting the fence into alignment first off. Um, one of the tricks that I learned years ago was to loosen these two screws right here just a little bit and allow this pad to float. Now I'm noticing mine are not floating per se, but uh, with those loose, uh, that basically what we want that pad to do is to just rest on the back fence rail and to keep the fence off the table. That's all that does. And we found that some of those, when they're tightened down a little bit crooked, actually encourage the misalignment. We don't want that. Um, I tend to keep my fence parallel or just off slightly of parallel with the miter slot. So one other trick here is you're going to, when you loosen the fence, just loosen it slightly. And then you can slide it and you can see the fence rail itself is not getting too crazy wacky on that end. And again, as you're getting in close to your final measurement, you can tighten that down. And you can always move your blade on the quill to get your final uh, adjustment when you're measuring. Now, how do you align this is, uh, is a question that a lot of folks struggle with, and I think the mounting instructions are wrong. Uh, the way the instructions tell you to do this is to take this off and to loosen both of these screws here in the bottom. Now, depending upon how old your machine is, it may have Allen screws here or it may have Phillips. I only loosen this front one right here, and the reason you do that is with that one loose, with the head here locked firmly in place, it will be loose enough that you can move the fence easily enough, but when you get it to the position that you want, lock the rear lock, okay, that's gonna lock against the real rail, and then you can get between those tubes, you know, my pen will fit there, but anyway, you can get between the tubes with your screwdriver and tighten that screw. If you loosen both of those screws, you then have to loosen all this and get it off without moving it, and then tighten that screw without hopefully having things move on you. I find that that's a hassle and it's an extra step that I don't need. All right, if you do that correctly, you should be able to slide the fence anywhere along the rail, bring it back in position, tighten it, and it should be right where you set it. And like I said, I keep mine maybe a millimeter off at the back just to prevent it from from binding and bur uh, binding and binding and burning, since I'm going to be jointing my sawn edges anyway, um, I don't mind if they're a little bit scratchy. Um, if I were using a beautiful blade here, then I might make sure that that's perfectly straight. As for the tension on the back there, you can see that I get this down to where it's almost closed, and it's at that point getting tight, and then it's just a maybe an inch, inch and a half of movement there for the final clamping action. You want it tight enough that when you do any horizontal boring or any pushing against the side of the fence, the fence isn't going to move on you. That's it. I mean, I love the fence that you and I have. The latest version, the 520 as they call it, I don't care for that at all. So hopefully this helps you, Adam. Again, I am bummed for you about your injury. Um, hope that you get to feeling better soon and uh, get back on that horse. All right. 